I was completely blown away by Fleabag. And I remember I got sent the first episode and I seen Phoebe's name and I was like, right, whatever this is going to be is going to be gold dust, surely. So without further ado, um, and with the magic of the internet, if I say these names, they're going to pop up on screen and you'll be able to see our wonderful nominees. So please first join us in welcoming Saran Jones. Saran, you can struggle with your camera and your whole, there you go. Done perfectly. You did it. So good to you, Saran. Thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, Saran is nominated for Anne Lister, um, her performance in Gentleman Jack, um, a kind of historical romp through the life of the landowner and industrial Anne Lister, who of course had a whole other side of her in that she had a very big plan to take a wife. Um, and all of that was well documented in a series of coded diaries, more of which we will hear about shortly. Welcome, Saran. Thank you so much for joining us. Next, let's see if we can get to see Glenda Jackson, the leg legendary Glenda Jackson, um, who is nominated for her performance as Maud in the incredible um, one-off drama, Elizabeth is Missing. Um, hopefully we'll be able to see Glenda in a moment. Um, Maud is an elderly woman who lives with dementia and it, it, while she is struggling with that she pieces together um, a double mystery. Now I can't quite see Glenda yet um, but I know she's here uh, so I'll let you get to grips with the camera in a second and I'll introduce our third um, uh, uh, nominee and I hope she won't mind if I introduce her as being the reigning champion of this category uh, the title holder she's of course Jodie Comer um, Jodie if we can see you hopefully you're coming hey. to oh hello Jodie <laughs> and of course Jodie is is on screen now and is in this in this uh, category for her performance as Villanelle in Killing Eve um, she, uh, of course, the, Villanelle is the, the hero, the heroine of the black comedy spy thriller, uh, Killing Eve. She plays a psychopathic assassin um, who's in a kind of cat and mouse chase with um, an intelligence officer. And of course, uh, Jodie won the um, award for her performance in season one of Killing Eve last year. And she is now up for season two, even though all of this audience will be well ahead of everything and we're all on season three. <laughs> Glenda, how wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank, well, thank you, you members so helping out there. With all of you. <laughs> oh, Amazing. it's great to see you all. Um, and we are hoping to be joined at some point by Samantha Morton, um, who of course is um, nominated for her incredible role of, as Kirsty in I Am Kirsty. Um, and uh, it looks like we're having some technical issues. So we're going to have to wait and hopefully she will pop up on screen at some point in the near future. But meanwhile, we have an enormous amount to get through. Um, all four of the uh, performances and particularly the three that you're looking at right now, the, the, the people playing now, incredibly powerful performances and playing incredibly powerful women on screen. Um, some of these performances looked like they might have been quite fun to play and some of them looked like they might have been really challenging. So let's find out if that was the case. Um, we're going to start in a really obvious place which is kind of what attracted you in the first place to these particular roles, these particular characters. And even more obviously I'm going to have to start with Glenda because you have been off our TV screen for, is it 27 years as a performer. Um, why was this the role to bring you back? Why did you want to come back and be moored? Because it deals with something that all Western democratic societies are facing, even with the COVID epidemic. And that is, we are as a people living longer. And diseases which, I mean, I go back a long way, but certainly in my childhood, and nobody I knew had suffered from Alzheimer's or dementia but they are the big ones now. And so as a society, we have to look this in the eye. And in this strange kind of way, I think, I, I tremble to say there's anything positive about COVID, but what I think there is positive is that the need for us as a nation to take on board the necessity for social care, because it is just out there waiting for us, like a great big black hole if we don't do something about it. And one of the good things that has happened lately is this is an issue that is going up the political ladder. And one of the things that I found most touching when the film came out, it's based on an extremely good book, 
the young woman who wrote it, it is essentially her experience with her grandmother, where the number of people who came up and said that a member of their family had suffered from one of these two terrible diseases. And that I found intensely moving, actually, because, you know, usually you don't get that. I mean, but for this story, which is of national importance, well, it's more than national, but certainly is of national importance, it was a privilege, really, to have a part in it. And did you, had you previously just sort of turned down, you, you told everyone you weren't doing television and this was one of the first projects that came about or was no. this, have you been attracted all along and then this was the one that grabbed you? <laughs> I know I was out of the business for more than 20 years, but I'll never forget those years when I couldn't find a job, even if I'd crawled on my hands and knees to get one. So if somebody sends you a script and you like the script, you're an idiot if you say no. But I had read the book and it did make a, a major impression on me, but also when I was privileged to be a member of parliament, mm -hmm. I would, when I would occasionally go to old people's homes or things of that nature, see people who were suffering from these terrible diseases and the agony of their families in many instances when, you know, their mother, father didn't recognize them anymore. And those, that really makes a profound impression on you. So I was, yeah, I was very excited mm -hmm. to do it. Okay. Um, Saran, your character Anne is based on a real person. Did you know about her before you took this on? So I've known Sally um, Wainwright for a long time. We've worked together um, quite a lot and I remember her telling me about um, this amazing place, Shipton Hall, that she knew when she was growing up and this amazing woman, Anne Lister, and that she'd written a script and she'd been she'd written so she's been writing versions of this script for 20 years nearly and um trying to get it um uh, across in the way that she wanted to but i think before it was made with me now um, it felt like a niche program and it felt like people wanted to push it to one side and um that people wouldn't be interested in a a lesbian landowner um, uh, who dressed the way that Anne dressed and um, and that was the story you know they wanted something else as the story so so I knew about her from Sally but I, I um, my very first agency was in Halifax so I kind of knew about Shipton Hall as well but it wasn't until my agent said look Sally's written these scripts and it's about Anne Lister and um, I'd seen the Maxine Peak one um, before ours and thought it was brilliant and thought the, the woman was brilliant. But when I read Sally's scripts, I was like, oh, this is like, um, it had such a modern feel to it. And it was the way that Sally writes in that, uh, you know, it's a Sally Wainwright script, but yet it was all based on the diaries. And then when I started to read the diaries, how she merged her work with the actual, um, entries and letters was mind-blowing um so I immediately wanted to do it and um yeah and, and I auditioned a couple of times for it and and got it thank goodness um Jodie you've been back several times to to play Villanelle what what was it that pulled you in in the very first instance and and you know what is it now that makes you keep going back to her well, in the first instance, it was um, Phoebe. It was, I think this was maybe a year after Fleabag had initially um, been on screen. Um, and I was completely blown away by Fleabag. And I remember I got sent the first episode and I seen Phoebe's name and I was like, right, whatever this is going to be is going to be gold dust, surely. Um, and yeah, I just remember reading the first script and it feeling very fresh and nothing like I'd really ever read before. So initially that was, it was one of them, if I don't get this, I can't watch it. <laughs> Usually I'm quite good at letting things go, but I was like, no, I'm not gonna be able to let this one go. Um, and obviously now is a continuation of that. It's, we never anticipated the first season being as big as it was. Um, and the fan base are hugely passionate and they spread the word and, the show became much bigger than we we ever thought. So now it's about kind of carrying on that legacy and trying to um, keep it going and be fresh and interesting and just do these characters um, justice, really. 